Chapter Two of the Way of Peace. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrea Fiore. The Way of Peace by James Allen. Chapter Two. The Two Masters, Self and Truth. Upon the battlefield of the human soul, two masters are ever contending for the crown of supremacy, for the kingship and dominion of the heart. The master of self, called also the prince of this world, and the master of truth, called also the father god. The master self is that rebellious one, whose weapons are passion, pride, avarice, vanity, self-will, implements of darkness. The master truth is that meek and lowly one, whose weapons are gentleness, patience, purity, sacrifice, humility, love, instruments of light. In every soul the battle is waged, and as a soldier cannot engage at once in two opposing armies, so every heart is enlisted, either in the ranks of self or of truth. There is no half-and-half half course. There is self and there is truth. Where self is, truth is not. Where truth is, self is not. Thus spake Buddha, the teacher of truth, and Jesus, the manifested Christ, declared that no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Truth is so simple, so absolutely undeviating and uncompromising, that it admits of no complexity, no turning, no qualification. Self is ingenious, crooked, and governed by subtle and snaky desire, admits of endless turnings and qualifications, and deluded worshippers of self vainly imagine that they can gratify every worldly desire, and at the same time possess the truth. But the lovers of truth worship truth with the sacrifice of self, and ceaselessly guard themselves against worldliness and self-seeking. Do you seek to know and to realize truth? Then you must be prepared to sacrifice, to renounce to the uttermost, for truth in all its glory can only be perceived and known when the last vestige of self has disappeared. The eternal Christ declared that he who would be his disciple must deny himself daily. Are you willing to deny yourself, to give up your lusts, your prejudices, your opinions? If so, you may enter the narrow way of truth and find that peace from which the world is shut out. The absolute denial, the utter extinction of self, is the perfect state of truth, and all religions and philosophies are but so many aids to this supreme attainment. Self is the denial of truth. Truth is the denial of self. As you let self die, you will be reborn in truth. As you cling to self, truth will be hidden from you. Whilst you cling to self, your path will be beset with difficulties, and repeated pains, sorrows, and disappointments will be your lot. There are no difficulties in truth, and coming to truth, you will be freed from all sorrow and disappointment. Truth in itself is not hidden and dark. It is always revealed and is perfectly transparent. But the blind and wayward self cannot perceive it. The light of day is not hidden except to the blind, and the light of truth is not hidden, except to those who are blinded by self. Truth is the one reality in the universe, the inward harmony, the perfect justice, the eternal love. Nothing can be added to it nor taken from it. It does not depend upon any man, but all men depend upon it. You cannot perceive the beauty of truth while you are looking out through the eyes of self. If you are vain, you will color everything with your own vanities. If lustful, your heart and mind will be so clouded with the smoke and flames of passion that everything will appear distorted through them. If proud and opinionative, you will see nothing in the whole universe except the magnitude and importance of your own opinions. There is one quality which preeminently distinguishes the man of truth from the man of self, and that is humility. To be not only free from vanity, stubbornness, and egotism, but to regard one's own opinions as of no value, this indeed is true humility. 
he who is immersed in self regards his own opinions as truth and the opinions of other men as error but that humble truth lover who has learned to distinguish between opinion and truth regards all men with the eye of charity and does not seek to defend his opinions against theirs but sacrifices those opinions that he may love the more that he may manifest the spirit of truth for truth in its very nature is ineffable and can only be lived he who has most of charity has most of truth men engage in heated controversies and foolishly imagine they are defending the truth when in reality they are merely defending their own petty interests and perishable opinions the follower of self takes up arms against others the follower of truth takes up arms against himself truth being unchangeable and eternal is independent of your opinion and of mine we may enter into it or we may stay outside but both our defense and our attack are superfluous, and are hurled back upon themselves men enslaved by self passionate proud and condemnatory believe their particular creed or religion to be the truth and all other religions to be error and they proselytize with passionate ardor there is but one religion the religion of truth there is but one error the error of self truth is not a formal belief it is unselfish holy and aspiring heart and he who has truth is at peace with all and cherishes all with thoughts of love you may easily know whether you are a child of truth or a worshiper of self if you will silently examine your mind heart and conduct do you harbor thoughts of suspicion, enmity, envy, lust, pride, or do you strenuously fight against these? If the former, you are chained to self, no matter what religion you may profess. If the latter, you are a candidate for truth, even though outwardly you may profess no religion. Are you passionate, self-willed, ever seeking to gain your own ends? self-indulgent and self-centered or are you gentle mild unselfish quit of every form of self-indulgence and are ever ready to give up your own if the former self is your master if the latter truth is the object of your affection do you strive for riches do you fight with passion for your party do you lust for power and leadership are you given to ostentation and self-praise or have you given up the love of riches have you relinquished all strife are you content to take the lowest place and to be passed by unnoticed and have you ceased to talk about yourself and to regard yourself with self-complacent pride if the former even though you may imagine you worship god the god of your heart is self if the latter even though you may withhold your lips from worship you are dwelling with the most high the signs by which the truth lover is known are unmistakable hear the holy krishna declare them in sir edwin arnold's beautiful rendering of the bhagavad gita fearlessness singleness of soul the will always to strive for wisdom opened hand and governed appetites and piety and love of lonely study humbleness uprightness he to injure naught which lives truthfulness slowness unto wrath a mind that lightly letteth go what others prize and equanimity and charity which splith no man's faults and tenderness towards all that suffer a contented heart fluttered by no desires a bearing mild modest and grave with manhood nobly mixed with patience fortitude and purity an unrevengeful spirit never given to rate itself too high such be the signs o indian prince of him whose feet are set on that fair path which leads to heavenly birth